So I want to take a look at this game that I played a few days ago. I had the black pieces and uh, my opponent played very strangely in the opening. I don't know if he wanted to avoid opening theory or maybe it was because I was slightly higher rated than him. So the game started e4, e5 and now this strange move a3 which as you can see is called the Mangarini opening and well besides thinking that it's just a bad move to be fair I have seen this move before but only against the Sicilian defense so I'll share c5 a3 and the point is that you want to go b4 and kind of go to a position similar to a wing gambit so I guess uh, a delayed wing gambit if you want to call it that I know Grandmaster um, Simon Williams played this um, move in a game which it was a very important game because he was playing for one of his grandmaster uh, norms so it's not entirely terrible but not against um, e5 so after this move I didn't know I mean I don't analyze moves like this so I decided to just play d6 and develop my pieces so after bishop c4 the point is he wants to retreat the bishop um, to a2 if I ever go uh, knight c6 and knight a5 so just to show that and now the bishop is putting pressure on the f7 square so for that reason I decided to go uh, bishop e6 and I don't mind if we trade bishops because now I can uh, push here and I have a nice center and yeah I mean now my bishop is just better it's more active than this bishop and he's wasted two moves uh, just moving the same piece so black can only be better and here I played bishop e7 instead of knight f6 because I kind of wanted to wait and see what my opponent was going to do. I thought he was planning on playing um, f4 just because he seems to be playing uh, very aggressively. And now again knight uh, c3 with, you know, it's kind of saying well I don't want to play knight f3 because maybe I want to play um, f4 at some point so now I went knight f6 and here he played d4 and well you don't really want to allow your opponent to have a big center after pushing him so you kind of have to take the pawn and after taking with the queen I went knight c6 I don't mind if he pins the knight, uh, wasting another move, I can just go a6 and uh, if he takes the knight then I get the two bishops so nice advantage for me so now he's moved the queen twice and he's moved the bishop twice so look at the evaluation slight advantage for black so I castle so you can see two pieces um, developed for white, four pieces developed for black, and now another move. Now this is not the same as playing um, a3. Uh, I thought he was going to go for g4 and just um, keep pushing the pawns and attack my king that way but he's still well if he's gonna do that 
it's a little scary um, with the king still in the center so maybe going bishop e3 queen d2 and castling first so in this position I decided to not give him time to push the pawn and just play d5 and open up the position because well opening up the position um, is advantageous to the side who has better development which in this case obviously is black now here my opponent just blundered the pawn and uh, I cannot explain why I didn't take the pawn I played uh, this move um, I guess you just don't expect your opponent to hang pieces on move 10 I mean we're essentially still in the opening but you know if I just taken the pawn this is just like completely winning for black there is no compensation whatsoever so after this move he took I recaptured and he traded queens which is good for me because I have pressure down the file one minor piece developed for white three for black this pawn is at being attacked so he played bishop f4 to defend it here I played a move which I would not play in longer time controls but here I thought that maybe I could get away with it and I just attack the pawn one more time because he seems to be the kind of player that is reluctant to give material or to trade pieces under certain circumstances and now he went bishop c4 and well he did play the best move here to um, double my pawns so now I have these two isolated uh, pawns which are weak but even though technically his pawn is not isolated from a practical point of view it kind of is and well here I have two threads one is to take the bishop one is to take the pawn and they're both uh, bad I mean you my opponent uh, played c3 and I just took the bishop so but if you play something like bishop g3 after this let's say you defend the pawn 94 this knight is ridiculous because you can't go anywhere um, I can just take it oh, you can't go here which means this rook is never getting into the game I mean the only move for the rook is to go rook a2 and you can look at that move and just laugh at it there's just nothing here I mean look at the evaluation it's more than a piece and count the pieces count the material so what after he played uh, c3 I just took the bishop and well Here my opponent just resigned because if you take I'm up a knight and this is just a simple win I'm just gonna push the pawn and even if, if we trade even if he takes the pawn and we trade his rook for my rook and this pawn I'm still gonna be up a knight so yeah that's what happens when you play something like a3 on move 2 so thank you for watching and I will see you next time